Lemonade up present. A play giant video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, welcome to another Lemon Amiga play guide and review. This time we'll be taking a look at Beach Boy, developed by Ocean France and released in 1989. This game was created by the same team who brought us Pang, Liquid Kids and Snow Bros. In this case, we play as a character who plays beach volleyball and a promoter interrupts your game one day whilst you are playing on the beach and offers you 250,000 if you can beat challenges from 8 countries in the Ocean Beach Volley Worldwide Tournament. From the menu we can press F2 to select a two player game or for this challenge I will select F1 for the one player experience. In this game, we must use our skills to beat an opponent over several rounds of beach volleyball. All we have to do is to belt the ball over the net to the opponent, and if the ball touches the floor or the ground around those opponents, then you will score. If the opponents mash the ball off the net and into your half, and that touches the floor, then they'll gain the point and it's the first guy to 7 points wins the trophy. Here we can play as a single player mode and unfortunately we cannot use the second player with a second joystick to control our teammate and he just moves around automatically but we can control our main character on the left hand side of the screen. In one player mode we must fight against the computer and the CPU isn't easy to beat in this case and the computer will put up a fight directly from level 1. By pressing up and fire together we can jump the ball and when we are in the air we can press fire again and that will hopefully help us connect with the ball and send that sailing across the net. As you do so the opponents will jump up and they will try and block that ball and they will also dive for the ball before it hits the ground and maybe 9 times out of 10 they will dive for the ball and save it. Fortunately this works in both of our favours and sometimes the player can be tremendously lucky when they dive for the ball and they can save a variety of pretty late wild manoeuvres. But all too often, once you realise you can block the ball, then this leads to a rally situation where it's a stalemate between you and the opponents and it can take quite some time for an opponent to score the goals and it's the first seven. As soon as an opponent or you hits that seven points, then you'll go on to the next game which will see us moving on to a new location. There are eight countries we must travel to in the world and we must beat all those 8 opponents in order to win the world championship. Unfortunately, most people who try beach volley experience something like this, an utter defeat on the first level with the computer control players seemingly unbeatable and it's an early bath and it's game over. Well, what 
can you do? All you can do is to try at that level again. Unfortunately, there is no way back to the title menu, so if the player wants to select two players, they will have to reset the machine. Otherwise, the first level will come up again and again and again until the player manages to get off level 1. And if they die on any of the other countries, then they will have to go back to level 1 and they will not see the menu ever again. After every point is scored, the ball will return to the point winning team and so they get to kick off again and they get to try and earn another point. And just like this, if the player can chain a combination together and get that ball in a prime position, then they can score that point pretty easily. And if we are at the top of that screen, that makes that process very much easier, as we shall see later on. If not, then the opponents may score against you and you'll find progress difficult. So even though we can jump up from a lower position next to the net, we find that that is basically a very hard way to score a goal and the opponents will block us if we do that and if we stand in the middle of that net and try and jump up then sometimes we will miss the ball so basically there is only one way to complete this game and it is virtually to cheat it is to repeat the same pattern over and over and over again and you will see me repeating that same pattern over and over again in this play guide the opponents can even miss your side with the play area and if that happens you will be awarded the point just like that. So the play area is clearly defined there with that white rectangle, you must get the ball within those bounds otherwise you will not be awarded the point. So let's see if I can program the computer to award me a point in return and just like that it's very easy. You will certainly get to see my tactics in this game and they don't usually vary from level to level because as I say, if you try any other tactic, you'll fail against the computer and you'll be frustrated with this game. To make things even harder, every game is timed and so all 7 points must be scored before that timer runs out and each game lasts for a total of 6 minutes. As soon as you see those last few points on the clock there in the bottom left hand corner ticking down, then the music will change and you only have a number of seconds to score that vital goal, otherwise it'll be game over and you'll have to start level 1 all over again. We are 6-1 up at the moment, so all we need to do is to score this final goal and we can move on to the next section. And just like that, it's as easy as that. from New York. The second level takes us on to New York, and even though the graphics change, the characters do not change, the playstyle doesn't change, and the gameplay is identical to the first level. In fact, I think New York player AI is just a little bit easier, and sometimes the player can find that after the level 1, they can move through the rest of the levels a little bit easier. As you can see, the graphics in this game are nicely drawn. In fact, the graphics for this game were drawn by three different people. Number one, Michelle Back, we went on to Operation Stealth. And number two, Philippe Desolet, we've covered already, he did Snow Bros and Toki. And number three, Pierre Eric Lorio, also went on to create most Ocean France games, including Liquid Kids, Toki, and Pine. I'm sure you'll agree that the graphics are very colorful and it's always odd to see the World Trade Center skyline there depicted in most New York City games but there it is and I'm sure they are building a brand new World Trade Center as we speak. The little intricate details on the backgrounds are very well done indeed. In fact on some levels you'll find topless ladies and all kinds of oddments in the background to please the eye. In the foreground we'll see the players never change, they are very genetic players, in fact all four characters are identical. It is also strange that two characters have blue shorts and two characters have green shorts and yet those characters are on opposite teams. I'm sure it would have made more sense to have two players wearing blue and the other two players wearing green and that just makes things a little more confusing. 
play area is nice and large and there are no scores taking up the room basically the scores are printed on the background there you can see those two birds holding up the scores and apart from the time there are no visual representations of any other items that you need to remember there are certainly no power-ups or upgrades basically the player you get is the player you end up with and again the tactics do not change from level to level and the controls and the play style do not change from level to level so it gets pretty samey pretty quickly because your opponents are from different places around the world it may have been a good idea to draw those a little differently in every instance and so for generic characters there is a little letdown but apart from that I'd certainly say the graphics are fluid and the scrolling is certainly smooth the Scream Ripper is only ripping 30 frames per second out of the Amiga's native 50 frames per second but I'm sure you can see the smoothness and the scrolling is probably as smooth as every other professional Amiga game this game was designed once again by Marc Dejean who also designed Dragon Ninja, Operation Wolf and Plotting and the code in this case was coded by Michael Janicki who also coded Cabal in 1989 Ivanhoe in 1990, Liquid Kids and Toki in 1991. Just like Toki and Liquid Kids, the controls are smooth, it's just a shame that there are very few controls in this game and that makes the action repetitive, but what there is is certainly well coded and programmed and apart from the game not returning to the title menu, there are no other bugs in this game and as far as I can see the action is competent throughout. Meanwhile, on the Amiga, I'm just one point from being able to move to the next location, and so America is basically over. In between every level we will find a short anecdotal animation there depicting one of the characters getting trampled on and defeated between the levels and those are certainly smart and a little funny and apart from the topless ladies in the background there there isn't much to laugh about in this game because the action is repetitive it's basically the art of trying to time a shot whilst that ball has disappeared off the top of the screen which is often borderline impossible from the go we can push up or down but we can also leave the ball to drop all the way down to our hands before we even launch that thing we can either jump up or we can launch that thing from a standing start but none of that will make any difference whatsoever on the play basically as soon as you get that ball over the net they will bounce the ball between the opposite players and then they will try and score so one two and then the third one they will try to score if you jump just before the opponent jumps then they will throw the ball inside the net and they will make a short ball but if you jump at the same time as they do then the ball will either bounce off you or they will go for the long ball so it's important as soon as you see that guy jump up and that will hopefully distract the other guy so that he doesn't throw the ball on target and a slow ball is easily caught on your side so distractions in this game work and if you can't do that then at least jump up and try and block the ball anyway so you can see there the earlier i jump up before he does the more he gets distracted and that gives me all the time in the world to pick up the ball and to figure out where it's going to go so again jump up early run to the top of the screen fire and up and fire again we'll usually launch the ball and oh the computer opponents managed to score a goal there well sometimes you can leave yourself wide open like that but usually if you avoid the wide open tactics and get to the top of that screen you can try for a long shot while the ball is in the air yes you can even control the ball with after touch and if you move the joystick in the diagonal top corner then the ball will veer to the top right if you hold the controller to the right when pressing fire to lower that ball then that will be a long shot over the net 
if you pull it left then that will be a short shot of the net and if you pull diagonal down then that will be a diagonal shot and sometimes you can diagonal down and move around all the players but usually the best tip is to maneuver your second player to the very top corner of the screen and jump up at the absolute perfect moment hold the stick to the right as far as it will go and that will long shot the ball and as long as the opponent isn't in your way like this you can get around those guys and score the goal so beach ball in this game is pretty easy it's basically a two player tennis game and if you've ever played doubles tennis then you'll be very familiar with this and the formula really doesn't change enough in fact this could be a doubles tennis game without too many coding differences and the game would be just as good because of that six minute time limit then actions really do get packed sometimes when that timer is ticking down there to the last few seconds and the adrenaline starts pumping because the player realizes that if they don't get that seventh goal then it's going to be game over and it's all the way back to the start so let's persevere and let's see if we can make this level complete I'm trying my best here to try and get into that top corner and diagonal top right means I maneuvered around that blocker but unfortunately the guy, the green guy, managed to run in and grab it anyway so let's try that again, top corner, jump and fire and there we go now I'm just one point difference and it's a shame that no other play actually works in this game I'm sure the player could get into a rhythm jumping in the middle or the bottom of the net and trying like that but I found that the other players block the ball if you're trying to do that so there really isn't much point Welcome to Luxor. I must say the music in this game is surprisingly well done I particularly like the title page and some of the level music is well done as well the music was created by Jean Boudelot some of you may remember he did the music for Snow Bros which we reviewed two reviews ago and he also went on to create the music for Future Wars and Flashback it's interesting to note that Jean Boudelot actually was a contestant in the 1979 Eurovision Song Contest and he worked for Delphine Records and in 1990 Delphine Records split up and created Delphine Software and that's why Boulot happened to be working for Delphine when they created Cruise for a Corpse and Flashback so Delphine there has certainly a history in the music business and in the computer games business after Flashback and Future Wars basically he worked on just a number of games and now is semi-retired but John Boulot also worked with Richard Clayderman for a time and had a small presence in the singles chart so working for the Amiga is certainly a come down from the 1970s singles mania and the song contest of Eurovision but I'm sure you'll agree the music is well done and there are lots of music in this game the game does feature music and sound effects but apart from a deflated ball sound when the ball gets hit and a yeah when the player manages to hit that ball well there aren't many sound effects in this game the best sound effect is the crowd chant when you score a goal and that certainly adds to the effect and you can see shadows there under the palm tree and that is also a great effect shadows under the ball and shadows under the players so shadows there unfortunately we don't get a textured sky but we do get naked ladies and sometimes that's enough <laughs> Taking a look at the comparison zone, this game was released for the Amstrad CPC, the Commodore 64, the ZX Spectrum, the Amiga and the Atari ST. You can see the ST screenshot is identical apart from the timer in the bottom corner and that's because most Amiga games were actually designed and developed on the ST and ported across the Amiga. 
apart from that, the Amiga version is probably still the best out of all these conversions, and it certainly has the best music. We are now only two points away from moving on to our next country, so let's hope we can get there. By jumping up early again, trying to get in that top corner, we can try our best to get it by that guy, and sometimes we can, and sometimes we can't. But the guy just catches it there, and if not, it's stalemate again. So let's try again, try again, or oh, unlucky there. Just slipped between our fingers and landed between our feet. So let's try that again. Bounce that ball. Let's jump up there just at the nick of time, and that should give us that point. Only one point in it now. So inside of the Sphinx, let's try it again for that final point. Knock that ball over, and since this guy jumps, we jump before him. Didn't make it that time and try to stay in parallel with that guy, try to match the guy who's jumping up and stay on the same level as that guy, otherwise you'll miss the ball. And look at that, I tried to jump at the bottom of the net, but I actually find the player actually jumps higher from the bottom of the net, and so hitting that ball in mid-air from the bottom is actually harder than just jumping up from the top. So let's move on to Australia. Good eye from Sydney. Good eye from Sydney. Certainly, the voice sound effects are well done, even though they are quite quiet. And welcome to London. Certainly a nice effect, but again, it is quite quiet on the native Amiga. By the time the player gets to Australia, they will find the going tough and these opponents very tough indeed. And so, if you are not cheating virtually and using the running to the top of the screen and whacking it trick, then you will find the going is certainly tough. And so, if I start to struggle, you'll realise that stalemates can and do happen, and one stalemate wastes the time, and if you aren't looking at the time, and if you waste too much time with those stalemates, then you'll run out of time, and it's all the way back. Another quirk of the Australian level is the fact that this background does not come from Australia. That background comes from the Monument Valley region of the Grand Canyon, made famous in all those classic westerns there. It is certainly not located in the middle of the Australian outback, and if this is supposed to be a night adventure and a night mission because the moon is up there, well, it's not very dark either. Above the scores, we can even see a skull of a longhorn cow, but longhorn cattle are actually native to Texas, and so longhorns are certainly not native to the Australian outback. The scores are getting quite tight here, and so is the time. You can hear the time jingle has started, and I need to score that final goal within the last 30 seconds or so, otherwise it's going to be game over. And missing the ball there doesn't help, so let's try again. 20 seconds to go, we still can't make it, and it's not looking good with all these blocks. 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Well, unfortunately, that is it. Which means the player has to play all those levels all over again. But we won't do that. We will simply skip onto that level all over again and we'll cut out all that waiting time. And as you can see, we are on the brink of another victory. But unfortunately, the computer player has to level those scores because this is an advanced level and although there are only eight levels in the entire game this is level five and you can't expect it to be easy on to our next level which happens to be tokyo
Welcome to Tokyo. Ah, what's happened to the graphics? Am I playing this on a CPC computer? Am I playing this on a PC? What's going on? What's with the CGA? I mean, you know, if they'd have put effort into this, this could have been the best level in the entire game. But it instead looks like a CGA PC running on a 286 processor. I mean, these graphics may be the most authentic representation of the light in the land of the rising sun, but unfortunately, I don't think that these graphics are anywhere near anything. It looks like the palette has crashed, even though this is the original from the game. And all the characters are now pink instead of sunburnt, and the sky, well, it's a turquoise and pink sky. And the music, I have to say, on this level is very, very annoying. I don't know quite how Jean Brulot managed to find the ow, 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 ow repeatedly on the keyboard to create the music. It's at this point that this game begins to show its cracks. Yes, the game is very repetitive and because the actions of the players are limited and their skills are limited in this game, we cannot pull slam dunks, we cannot run and throw things from the back of the field and expect those to land on the ground. All we can do is slam dunk over the net and that gets so repetitive by this level and the trick to completing this game gets so repetitive by this level that the player will become very bored if not very frustrated with the repetitiveness of this game. And that spoils this game because I remember having this in the early 90s and I didn't think this game was too bad. I actually quite liked some of the features. Unfortunately, the single player experience suffers from many problems and boredom certainly sets in by this point. So on we go to the next level. Welcome, comrade. This is the penultimate level in Beach Volley. Here we are in Moscow. And unlike Pang, it isn't a snow covered wasteland in which we slip slide all over the track. Instead, we find green grass and two very angry hammer and sickle guys in the background to keep score. No naked ladies, of course, because it's far too cold for any of that. After this level, we find the final level is Paris, and if we complete the final level, that gives us an ending sequence, which I shall actually show you after this. But we will not get to Paris on this playthrough, basically because I am bored of playing the same level all over again, using the same tactics, the running to the top of the net, and slamming it home technique. And yes, by this stage, the guys on the opponent team are actually very hard. And unless you do that, you'll find the game is very unplayable. And you can see me standing there waiting to capture that thing. But the enemies are already three goals up. And so you'll have to pull out all the stops on this level if you want to get anywhere near the finish line. Taking a look at the scores, the magazine reviewers were initially fond of this game, rating it C Omega 88%, Zap gave it 85% and Your Omega gave it 85%, who said this was challenging and strangely addictive. Unfortunately, many of the other magazine reviewers weren't so kind, Amiga Action gave this 73% and after its release, well, CU Amiga garnered the budget release 43% and Amiga Power 28%. The Amiga Power team complaining that this was a poorly disguised tennis game and I can certainly see their point. 28% for this repetitive level being played over and over again with different backgrounds and the same players certainly is understandable and actually peeling behind the surface glam and the gloss of this game the hype reveals nothing under the surface. So I feel that's a shame because as I say the graphics, the sound and most of the playability is there 
I wish they'd have included extra moves and extra tactics in this game and it's a shame that the enemies are either so easy that they are a pushover or so hard it's a joke. So very very mixed bag, I remember playing this and loving it back in the day but looking back at this now it feels like a much wasted opportunity. Thank you for viewing my play guide and review to the Ocean France game Beach Boy. Hope you can join us again soon for another play guide and review. And until then, thank you so much for watching. Thanks a lot for your